starting. And we're live. Woo -hoo. And we're live. Woo -hoo. And we're live. <laughs> oh no, we have that loop. We're live. We're live. Hang on. What do I have to do to turn off that loop? I forget. Oh, that may be, Lori, that may be yours because the, there's the loop there. How do I stop that? Um, hmm. Headphones? <laughs> no, I don't have them with me. <laughs> no, I don't have them with me. <laughs> no, I don't have them with me. <laughs> Do that with your volume. I thought we turned down one of the volumes. Do that with your volume. Oh, hang, hang on, everybody. We're gonna we're gonna pause the stream for a second. Hang on, everybody. We're gonna we're gonna pause the stream for a second. Hang on, everybody. We're gonna we're gonna pause the stream for a second. Hang on, everybody. We're gonna pause. Hmm. Maybe we're not gonna pause the stream for a second. I'm gonna mute everybody. There we go. All right, can everybody hear us? Oh, the echo's still there. Oh, the echo's still there. Oh. Hmm. All right, we're gonna we're, we'll try to push on with it and see what happens. But uh, we'll see how it works. Is everyone okay? We'll, uh, we'll wait a few more minutes for a couple more people to pop in, and then we'll get started. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Zachariah. Hi, Zachariah. See, Lori, I'll be your, I'll be your echo. <laughs> echo, echo, echo. <laughs> I don't hear the echo anymore. I think it's gone. I oh, I hear it loud and clear. Oh, I don't hear it. <laughs> is everyone else having? Is anyone else have an echo or? Oh, Lori, I think you're the only one. Do you think because we're on Skype? Maybe if I turn Skype off. Yeah, mute it. Don't 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 uh, turn it off, but mute it. Or here, uh, I'll I'll tell you what. I'll mute me. On the Skype call. Okay. And now you should just hear me through YouTube, Lori. I think we're good now. Okay. You can hear me? I think we're good 
Nope, I just heard it looped again. Uh, mute yourself on. Oh no, because then I can't hear you. Yep, hearing, hearing myself. Yep, hearing, hearing yeah. myself. Well, we'll make it work. Well, everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, we'll we'll get started. Hello, everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, before we get started with writing music, I do want to introduce everyone to. Uh, I, I'm so honored and excited. Um, when I put this project out. Uh, to begin with, uh, Lori Schwartz Reichel was kind enough to literally just respond with, How can I help? And uh, for those of you that know Lori, um, she is the perfect moderator for anything. So that was the job I thought of for her. And uh, Lori, would you like to introduce yourself and say hello for a minute? Lori, would you like to introduce Sure. Thanks for having me, John. I don't know how well I'll be moderating with the Echo, but I will certainly do my best. Uh, Lori, Lori is <laughs> so hello, be everyone. Great. Hi, Mark. Hi, Zachariah. So hello, everyone. Hi, Mark. Hi, Zachariah. All right. Well, let's get started. So, um, one of the the uh, things we're going to be doing with this piece is we need to come up with. Uh, hi, Rob. Uh, we need to come up with uh, some sort of theme or idea or concept that we'll be doing. Now, um, for those of you that didn't see, today we're going to be writing a grade three concert band work. Um, and that's our goal for today, but that's pretty much it. It's a blank sheet of paper, literally, as you can see. Um, I'm interested to hear what you guys think that we should write about or um, topics or anything like that. Uh, Lori is going to be moderating. I'm not really going to be paying attention to the chat, so she's just going to tell me what you all think and what I need to do. Any, uh, anybody like to share to get started? Anybody like to share to get started? So I'll start off a little bit. So not being a composer, I'm fascinated about how composers start and write things. And so I was asking John before we got started, you know, what is something that you think about immediately? Do you think about what the title of the piece might be? Do you think about the style? Do you think about, is it going to be a fast pace, a slow pace? What are those things? So, yeah, are you looking for ideas at the moment? Yes, Zachariah, we are. Do you have any? Well, we're waiting to see what uh, Zach says. So to uh, answer what Lori was saying and how I uh, answered to her question earlier is um, one of the things that I do is I try to come up with a, a, a narrative or a plot or some sort of uh, story. Um, if you will, a lot of my pieces, like I almost have like a, a quasi film that I kind of script out in my head uh, that sometimes don't ever make it to the program notes, but uh, they exist. <laughs> and uh, so I have like almost like quasi stories, uh, like my Adventure Express, there's a train and it's going west and then it becomes uh, like nighttime, and then uh, the sun rises. Hi, Jenny. Um, and then, you know. Um, Jenny! <laughs> and then, uh, you know, there's a, like a little bit more turbulent section, almost like uh, uh, maybe they're running late, or maybe they're trying to hurry to get wherever they're going, and then um, at the end, obviously, they get there. So that's kind of the things I kind of think of uh, when I'm writing a piece of music. So when John and I were talking, he was thinking about how this piece will describe the uncertainty that we're dealing right now in the world. So my thought is maybe we start this piece, you know, moderato or allegro tempo. We're all going through our lives as normal. And then, bam, we're hit with this pandemic, and it slow, you know, stops us right in our tracks. So maybe something like that. 
We got some. We got some good things here. Uh, yes. Um, so Zachariah is saying, "Life flashing before your eyes," kind of concept. Yes, that sounds fantastic. Hi, Tyler. That's good. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Zach. Uh, uh, Zach, we've already said hi to you. Sorry, but hi, Tyler. Uh, Tyler, uh, what key we're gonna start with? Do you find? Oh, sorry, Lori. That's I'm not gonna read. Okay, sorry, Lori. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. So this was, Tyler, this was a question I was asking John myself. So being a non-composer, I said, geez, where do you start? Do you think about the key signature first? Do you choose a time signature first? What is, you know, coming in your mind? Do you know exactly what tempo you want to start with? Uh, so, yeah, what do you decide first? So with me... Um... The great questions here, Tyler. Do you just find a melody and then fit that to the key you want for wind band specific purposes, or do you decide first? So since we're not really coming up with any particular storyline here, why don't we go ahead and start with a key signature? So who would like to throw out a key signature to begin this piece? Well, so, so, to, so to go with uh, a little bit more on... Um, and Rob just asked the same question i was just about to cover too so to go on what tyler and and rob are saying i'm sorry um Lori, do you want to tell everyone what rob asked sorry sure rob asked do you have music in your head before you start do you have a motif or a theme that's running through your mind so sometimes i'll start with the melody first and that will determine the key and the uh time signature uh, I'll write it down. Sometimes, like, I mean, I have documents and templates that are just uh, basically preset, like whatever key I used last. So I'll start writing something and try to figure out what key is best for the instruments that I'm writing for. Like this one, if we're doing something mysterious, I would imagine it would be like a lot of low brass. And it'd probably be a lot of long tones to start off with before we introduce the melody. Because it's very mysterious, uh, uncertain. So we may start with some long tones, and we need to think of a key that may be good for the lower voices uh, and not necessarily um, the upper voices. And then we also want to think about, you know, the level. So we're, we're doing a grade three piece. So we could be thinking about um, an average or a fundamental or a more advanced middle school group and a, maybe a less advanced or younger high school group. So keep that in mind for a key signature as well. So let's get started. So, um, hmm, I'm thinking actually we may be good in this key signature here that we're in. Um, we may, <laughs> uh, we may be good in C minor for kind yeah of, key of E flat major. That's what Tyler's suggesting. <laughs> yeah, we, well, we may be good or C even, minor. Yeah, C minor uh, <laughs> yeah. to start off with some long tones and some uncertainty. So here. Let's come up with maybe a chord progression that we can build on. So uh, we'll start in C minor. Um, <laughs> Let's do that, that, and that. And uh, obviously uncertain, kind of spooky sounding. We're going to want something quiet in the beginning. And then maybe... Let's we'll see how that sounds. And Again, we'll... as a non-composer, it's interesting for me to watch your efficiency with how quickly you're able to work through this. All right, and this is going to be our first test of this, too. Let's see how this sounds before we go any further. And please tell me, or Lori, um, if you can hear... Um, if you can't hear this, let me know. So I could work with that. I may keep that. Uh, I may try a few different things. Could everybody hear that? Lori, could you hear that? Yes, I could hear it. Chat, could you guys hear that? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yep. Hmm. Let's try a few other options before we settle on that. We can always come back to that. Oh, 
this is going to be... Uh... Rob's is suggesting that we add some dynamic swells to this immediately. Yeah, let's, let's try it. Let's see. Let's try this real quick. Ooh, I kind of like that. Right here. Tyler's suggesting to make chord 2 G flat. Uh, so, oh, a I meant A flat. He says A flat. <laughs> I was going to say a Tyler. Flat. <laughs> I was going to say, isn't, isn't it already G flat? <laughs> All right. Hmm. Let's try it. Uh, let's leave that there. Let's, oh, I got rid of the wrong. Oh, wait, that's already there. And Rob thinks once you change that chord to then decrescendo, the second measure. And so here's another question. Do we want a very dramatic swell or do we just want a medium swell like that? Do we want a forte or... I mean, obviously we want to come back down, but what do we want? Rob, do you want a decrescendo immediately? Oh, there we go. Rob, do you want a decrescendo immediately? Oh, there we go. Are we okay with uh, mezzo forte or do we want... To, uh, do we want more dramatic? Yep, yeah, Rob says that's great. <laughs> Let's try it. That's nice. All right, so where do we do we go back to C minor then? Great. Now Tyler says, what if we do? Yeah. Like, if we hear that again. Okay. Like I like that idea. That again, and then with another swell, even larger. Let's do it. Right and here. then with another swell, even larger. Is, now, is that big enough, or do we want to go... So, so, do we, so we go back C minor, A flat, C minor. Tyler's thinking maybe a new fourth chord. Okay. Tyler's thinking maybe a new fourth chord. I was kind of a fan of the, the G flat chord. Let's see how everybody feels about that. Ooh, I really like that. But I do think that we need to take this a little slower. I, I'm picturing Batman right outside my window right now. <laughs> I like I, I like that swell. Batman right outside my window right now. Uh, I'm gonna slow it down to uh, on Dante. I think we need it needs to be a little slower. Everybody seems to like that so far. And let's go eighty. Okay, let's try it at the slower. See if we all. Everybody seems to like that so far. How do we feel about that? I really like that. Awesome. Now, Rob is suggesting that we repeat those four measures and on the repeat, put a melodic line above that. I completely agree with that. I was thinking the same thing. So the one thing I do want to add is to add a little bit of dramatic effect. Um, add a little bit of a bass drum roll here. Oopsie, not quite there. That's in the wrong spot. I downloaded this. Oh, little... Tyler, yes, we are adding the percussion right in with the bass drum. Would you like to hear more than the bass drum, Tyler? Oh, Tyler, yes, we are adding the percussion right in with the bass drum. Would you like to hear more than the bass drum, Tyler? I downloaded this cool plugin that allows uh, this little let ring thing. So this eighth note here is actually not really going to display on the print preview so you can all see uh, for those of you that may not be familiar with Sibelius so it ends up appearing like this with that little uh, let ring or let vibrate tie afterwards 
Tyler's su- suggesting that we add a suspended symbol roll going into measure five. Okay. What about uh, Tam Tam? Or do we do we do we want the um, the suspended symbol roll? Tyler, would you prefer Tam Tam or suspended symbol? And while while we're looking for that, I do need to quickly. If Tyler, we're gonna would do you Tam prefer Tam Tam, Tam, Tam to... or suspended symbol? So for those of you that like uh, nerding out about computer programs here, I'm going to do some quasi-programming in Sibelius here and uh, add a TamTam regardless whether or not we use it. Uh, That can be a determination for later. Let's see if I can get something here. There it is, TamTam. Oh, no, 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 no. Even though it is TamTam, I like to use not... Tam Tam sound. I like to use um, the gong because it sounds better. Suspended symbol. Okay. Yeah, Tyler's suggesting the suspended symbol. And I'm trying to read your shorthand, Tyler. So does that mean on beat three of measure four into measure five? So, John, will you allow questions regarding the composition process outside of this particular piece? We have a couple guests that are asking questions regarding what their, um, what recommend, recommendations there are for software. Can we have that conversation as well? Sure. Um, I feel, so for software, um, everyone's different. And to be entirely honest with you, uh, my kind of, uh, history with software, I, I, I have used, um, I've used all of them. Uh, I have used Finale. I used Finale. Finale was actually the program I started on um, when I was in high school. Um, and then our college used, uh, Kent State University, where I went to school, used um used um Sibelius so I started using Sibelius as a result of that uh and now Dorico is out um and I I mean I really I I have to be entirely honest whatever one is the one that you find you work faster in is the one you should use uh nowadays they all pretty much all do the same things um all of them or or uh, are uh, quality things. Oh, sorry. All right, people, people want to want to get back to work. Okay, sorry. I could go on about software for a while, but this you have to find the one that works for you. That's what you have to do, and you have to find. I mean, all of them have free trials. Try them. And. The knowledge of the software. So John is maneuvering through this so quickly and doing such a phenomenal job. The knowledge of the software. So John I am um, maneuvering through this so uh, quickly. I, uh, and, and just one more thing, and then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, kind of stick, stay away from the software thing. Because, uh, uh, you know, especially with these programs, um, um, people are very passionate about them, you know, kind of uh, – kind of Mac versus PC passionate about them. And so, uh, you know, it's best to kind of uh, uh, be careful about them. And again, it's kind of like Mac versus PC. Find the one that works best for you. And uh, I'll leave that at that. Um, All right. So anyways, back to the piece of music. Um, Let's give us a listen to. Going back to the compositional process. So let's look at where we are. As far as key signature, where we are with time signature right now, we're up until about measure six, we can see, 
and we're going a little bit beyond that with some repetition. Where do you want to go next, everyone? up a little bit and even be a little bit more surprising here like uh, these we could probably get away with repeating the same as this this one I kind of feel like if we repeat it again people are gonna I don't know to me it, I'm uh, I have this kind of philosophy when composing um, my philosophy when composing is that if I'm not sold on it someone else isn't gonna be sold on it either uh, so I have to be sold on whatever I'm writing or else people may not want it. Well, Tyler's been very eager to add some chords. So Tyler, do you have a suggestion for measure eight? And Peter has a suggestion as well. John, are you able to see Peter's suggestion G there for a chord? Sharp 11. And Peter has a suggestion as well. Oh, we'll John, see what happens. Well, I was also going to say before we hop on that, Peter, I, I do like that suggestion. Yeah. Uh, but before we hop on that, what what if, uh, do we want to keep this down here in these lower voices? Do we want to uh, expand some of it? Like, should the clarinets have it? Should the clarinets, uh, one thing we can add and the clarinet line is to just do something like, um, uh, hang on one second. Okay, sorry about that. Um, something like, do we want to, like, um, here, I'll, let me, I don't know how to say what I'm trying to think here. Do we want to do, um, so it's C minor, do we want to do something like this? Personally, I was liking the whole note chords by themselves rather than putting some type of subdivision in there with the clarinet. Well, here we'll try this, and, and if we, I, I mean, I can go either way. Let's, uh, we'll try it here. Let me uh, get this chord in here right, and then we will, uh, we'll try it. And then if we don't like it, we'll get rid of it. And if we like it, we'll keep it. Because I'm, I'm good with either. Here, let me steal these dynamics real quick. All right, let's try it. Tyler agrees with me. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> uh, how do we feel? Are we, do we want to get rid of it? I'm, I'm okay with getting rid of it. What if we left the first four measures as the whole note chords and then added those eighth notes starting at measure five? Ooh, that's a good idea. And then here, Tyler was suggesting that we can... I'm oh, sorry. Oh, and Peter is agreeing with that as well. Let's try this. Peter is agreeing with that as well. Yeah, so let's leave the whole note chords in measures one through four and let's add the subdivision with the eighth notes and the clarinets starting at measure five. Oopsie, I did it bad. I forgot to update this. Yeah, so that's what we have, we, we, or what I, what I did. Um, let's not do that. Anyone who's a clarinet player knows why we shouldn't do Great. that. Great. All right, let's try this from the beginning. Let's see what happens. Uh, yes, Tyler. We can get rid of it. I'm not attached to it. I, I kind of like the the C there there in the the tube. I mean, I'm not too attached to it. But, but... Are you planning to make any changes in there? 
Uh, I mean, I like this. I mean, now the question is, yeah, is do we want to make any changes in there? Double this a little bit like that. I like this. Or do we want to leave it on just the first clarinet? Like, is it just like a little? Uh, you may not hear it. That's so. I mean, you have to think uh, orchestrationally. Um, you have to think the orchestrationally there. <laughs> Uh, you have to think orche uh, orchestrationally um, about will we be able to hear the clarinets if we leave it at um, just one clarinet. So that's other. So there's another thing that you know. Um, I'm sure. So what's everybody's thoughts with the whole notes at the beginning here being with just the low brass? Do you think that we should add in? Low woodwinds as well, possibly tenor saxes and berry sax. Tubas as with well. These whole notes, or not yet? I, was, I just said tubas, bass player. You're right. I'm sorry, Lori. I interrupted you, and you were right, and I was a a, a dummy. Yeah, John, leave me to the moderating, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Lori. I know I'm 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 a. Uh... I'm bad. I, I invited you to, to do that, and I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Lori's going to be like, John, I had one job. <laughs> okay, so Rob says yes. Go ahead and add in some of the lower woodwinds. Okay, let's do it. So do we want to add them here at, uh, at, at, at 5? Like that? Oop, that's a little low. And Peter, don't tell Tyler I'm adding that. Where do we want to start them from measure one? So if we're thinking grade three piece here, let's think you're purchasing this for your middle school band. What is the instrumentation? Well, hopefully you have all instrumentation there. But if you're low on your lower voices, your euphonium, your trombone, your tuba, maybe you want to write this in immediately for the low woodwinds at the start of the piece. Well, so there's always another workaround for this as well. Uh, and here, I'll just put it. Here, and I'll, sh I'll show you guys kind of a, a trick of the trade that I'm, I'm sure uh, Peter and Tyler would uh, would know. But we'll do this, and then hang on. Yeah. So Peter's giving the suggestion of cueing them in those voices. Yep. I think that's a great idea. Oh, and there we go. That's what John's doing right now. Excellent ideas. Uh, Peter, don't tell Tyler. So the cues will be available then if you don't have instrumentation in those low brass voices. Your students on the low woodwinds could play them as an alternative. Bye, Rob. This will be online later if you want to check it out. See where we went. Bye, Rob. Thanks for joining us. All right, so let's give this a listen. Oh, there's one other thing for the cue in Sibelius. I have to turn that off so it doesn't play. All right, let's give this a listen. And then um, we'll have to determine. So here, I, I'm a, a fan of this. I know some people are not, of uh, phrase prolongation. Um, I had a teacher in college who used to uh, constantly, whenever I would have constant four bar phrases he would say it's predictable do something different and so uh, I've kind of always done that since uh, so what we're gonna do is do this do that because I really like this now the question is here do we um here what we'll do here is we'll leave this because this will probably go on and won't need a dynamic just like that one won't so the question is now and i know Lori yeah so this is fascinating peter i was thinking the same thing as we're watching john maneuver through this software so quickly he has all these um shorthand commands that he's using and this is awesome to watch him do this live alt shift d grabs just the dynamic so here if we do this if I hit alt shift and D it'll select and filter just the dynamics and uh, I got that trick 
from, I think it's in the That's fantastic. Oculus. Where is it? Uh, yeah, right here. In the filters list, Dynamics, Alt-Shift-D. I know, mind blown, right? <laughs> All right. So, uh, as Lori, I know Lori had asked this. This will save, yeah. This will save you a lot of time, Zachariah. And Peter's mind is blown. Uh, the question is now. Uh, I know we had suggested so a melody here. So, um, in a grade three, sometimes putting triplets against duple is okay. Um, if we decide to go with triplets, these may have to disappear. Like if I was writing for this for a college, uh, I would have no quarrels against putting triple against What measure triple. are you thinking of starting the melody? Uh, I was thinking here, right here at, at five. Uh, but my kind of debate was is, so for example, if I wanted to do something like this, and not saying this is a good idea yet, but just something like this. Uh, so if we went... Personally, I like the chordal structure in the first four measures. Then I like the layering of the eighth notes in measure five. I'd love to hear the melody in measure nine. How many people would like to hear it in measure nine? Hey, I'm going to cheat. You all can't judge. I need to cheat for a minute because my uh got a lot going on in my head, and my uh, transposition isn't going well for me at the moment. <laughs> Normally, I'm usually pretty good at not... Uh, not needing transposition but now i need it so we're, so we're saying uh 10 10 we put it in and then maybe we steal this and then we oh 10 yeah i'm sorry i'm saying wrong number 10. okay uh, and then we'll here these we can take because oh 10 these. yeah i'm sorry G flat, so that would be A flat. Uh, oopsie, didn't mean to do what I just did. Uh, so then if you select these, now this may be a little ugly because as you can see it's selecting the dynamic. A way to get around that is to just select these. If you then hit R, it'll repeat whatever you have uh, selected. So I just hit R there and it repeated that. All right, so let's see. Uh, oh, we're going to see if we want to stick with this triplet thing or if we want to do something different here. So let's go into this here at 10. Uh, I'm sure we're going to probably want this percussion thing going into it too. We may have to revise it a little bit, but. All right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I see all these engravings. Now, right now you have the melody at 10 in the horns. Did you want to double that in the alto sax, or do you want to put cues in the alto sax? Uh, so to answer your question, sorry, I just kind of did it. Depending on the range, uh, I find that I will either double it in the alto sax or sometimes even the tenor sax, um, depending on the range. Now, so here, just so we can all see. Oh, do really? We, tenor sax? Do we want the brighter upper register of the tenor, or do we want the lower register uh, of the really alto? Tenor sax? That's kind of something. Now, we can listen to it, I mean, and see, but you have to think about, like, when, you know, uh, Lori, well, Lori, what is your main instrument? Well, that's what I'm asking, because my main instrument is saxophone, and so I primarily play alto sax so i'm thinking whenever i see something in french horn i'm thinking oh doubled in alto sax and i think tenor sax more with trombone and euphonium voice i mean it, it truly depends on uh, i mean you know thinking about what this is going to sound like in like the lower i mean this is obviously going to be very strong on an alto that's like kind of like the the wheelhouse or this is going to be a little bit more uh you know, you have your octave key down. This may be a little bit more not as strong. 
it all depends on you know again the ranges and uh, how you feel about that Ooh. let's try let's try the tenor and let's see what happens we'll work our way into it and then we can make a decision Lori, did you did you want to yeah answer? peter is saying his preference is horn and tenor all right let's give it a try let's see what happens yeah peter is saying his somewhere oh I see I see what I did I accidentally copy and pasted the wrong measures see that's the bad part of copy and paste you gotta be careful with it and I also forgot the uh, the bass clarinet there oh I also forgot so here since we did this with the cue with the tuba I also forgot we have to tell these people to play because you know there's going to be some uh, poor little uh, middle schooler who'll go uh, raise her hand and go, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, am I supposed to play there? So it's always good to err on the side of caution. Uh, how do we feel about 10? Good idea. Good idea. Peter, do you like 10? Zachariah, are you still here? Do you like 10? Peter, do you like 10? Zachariah, are you still here? Do you like 10? Yeah, Peter likes 10 as it is. Okay, so then kind of yeah, a, a thing, something I may do with a theme. And so does Zachariah. So they're both agreeing. I'm not sure if Mark is still around, but Mark, if you want to let us know what your preference is for 10. If Mark isn't here, I'm going to send him a sad message. <laughs> Looks like I have to send him a sad message. Uh... Whoever's here, don't be afraid to say hello, and don't be afraid to uh, uh, ask questions. Lori is uh, uh, moderating the conversation, um, and uh, she'll she'll make sure I get all of your questions. Lori's doing a fantastic job. I feel bad because I keep accidentally doing the job I gave her. So why don't we go back to the beginning, start it from measure one. Sure, let's do it. Oh, so I was going to do this, too. Um I want to quickly, before we do that, uh, okay, now let's try it. Let's see. Oh, wait. Oh, no, it's not going to work. That should work. All so right, just looking at the clock a little bit, John, we're at 3.45, so we've got about 15 minutes left if we want to develop this theme a little bit more. Ooh, I just realized we could just do... All right, let's hear it from the beginning, and then we will uh, we'll, we'll move on. And by the way, we don't need to, to – I won't work on this when you're all not looking. So wherever we leave off today, I will close the file, and that will be where we pick up the next time we meet. Now, uh, I will put voting online um, for you all to vote. When you all would like to, me to do this again, is this going to be like a every couple day thing or once a week thing? Um, and then it all comes down to when Lori's also free. So I'm not going to sign her up to uh, do this unless she's free. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I'll put a vote up probably sometime soon. All right, let's give us a listen from the beginning and then we'll go on from there.
I love all the swells in here. Now, one thing that we should do, um, I'm thinking that, okay, so what we need to do, what we're going to do, what I'm thinking is this needs to become a layer two, it needs to go like that. Yeah, Zachariah, I was thinking the exact same thing. So Zachariah says, um, it seems like the first time that we hear that triplet figure, the first two notes are difficult to distinguish. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's I don't know if it's an articulation thing. I don't know if maybe we should change the pitch so they're not repeated as the same note as the half notes. So what should we do in there to, to make those triplet figures a little bit more distinguishable? Any suggestions? Uh, I, I, uh, I agree with that, and I was thinking the same thing. I think we just get rid of the triplet, especially because uh, the triple against the duple and the clarinets may be a little tricky at this level. So the easiest solution is to just get rid of it. Unless you all have a, uh, a Yeah, but idea. I could speak a little bit about this level being um, a middle school director. I, I find that when students understand that triplet figure, it is in their head then. And so I wouldn't be concerned with the fact that it's going against the eighth notes and the clarinets. I think you'll be okay with that figure if we would like to keep it in there. We just need to make it more distinguishable by popping it. True. We, I mean, we could, we could give it accents, or we could change the notes of them. So I mean, uh, what do Peter's you suggesting that maybe we add it into percussion. So maybe on the snare drum. Or, or do you think bass drum? Because we, we haven't really introduced the snare yet, and especially in this. It dark... could help pop. It could distinguish it a little bit more. Tom part. I do like that idea. Or you could do snare drum. Peter says maybe in the tom. I was going to say mm -hmm. snare with the uh, with the, the snares off as well. Peter says maybe in the tom. So here, we'll put that back. Um, Yeah, so now we need to think about, do we want to do that triplet figure in the toms or snares off? Or we could write it in the toms and we could give it an option of snares off. Um, one thing, and this may be just for the playback sake, uh, I'll have to look. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Um, however, I'm not prepared to do it now. How to get Sibelius to play that. I mean, there's ways to do it, but how to do it how I have it set up uh, is a different question. Um, for now, the playback is going to have snares on, but we'll write snares off. And uh, I'll have to come back and figure that out later. So it's going to play back with snares on. but um... Sorry, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> My husband never calls me during the middle of the day, and now he's calling me today. <laughs> it's, un it's unusual times. My husband never calls me during the middle of the day, and now he's calling me today. All right. Let's see how this sounds. Yeah, so the triplets are definitely popping now. So now we just need to decide, do we like the pitches that we've selected in the horn lines? guys. 
guys to tell me what to do. I am going to add this uh, bass drum part here. Peter's giving some suggestions here regarding editing of instruments. John, can you see his notes there? Peter, I'm going to look Peter's at that. Giving some suggestions um, here regarding editing of instruments. I'm going to look at that John, when we're off the live stream, so I don't want to waste everybody's time uh, looking at that um, when we could be doing that. But uh, maybe I'll uh, Facebook message you, and we can walk through that um, later today. Maybe when the stream is over, Peter, I'll send you a Facebook message and we can we can talk through that. Uh, but in the meantime... Um, yeah, Peter's totally down with that. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, so... Um, yeah, Peter's that'll be... Totally oh, we won't put a rehearsal mark there. That's a little too soon. Um, I'll tell you what. We're actually at a really good stopping point. Uh, I will put on Facebook... Uh, sometime tonight, a link for you all to vote how frequently we want to work on this together. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. And Lori, I'm so grateful that you were able to, to join us uh, for this. Uh, I'm really grateful that you, you uh, helped. We couldn't have done this without you. Oh, thank you. I love it. We definitely have to work on this looping thing because those of you that are hearing it, there's an echo in my end. So that's why I'm sort of stopping my talking from time to time because I'm speaking and then I'm hearing the echo and it's it's catching me and messing with my mind. But yeah. I'm enjoying from an educator standpoint watching you do this, John. Again, I'm not a composer. That's not my skill set. My But my knowledge of this level of music is phenomenal. And so to watch you doing it on the spot is just so enjoyable and to see what's going through your mind and other composers' minds as we build this together. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue to build this. Uh, again, I'm going to put a form online. And uh, regardless of what the votes are, uh, it all comes down to when Lori is free and when I'm free to do this again. Um, and then we will, you know announce it. I mean, I still want you guys to have a say, but if you all write every day, <laughs> Lori may not be able to pull that off and I may not be able to pull that off, but I mean, I'll make it a choice. And I mean, maybe if, I mean, times are weird right now, so we'll see what, <laughs> what happens. Or it might, it might have to be at 10 o'clock Eastern time. But uh, regardless of streams, I'll make the streams all public and I'll make sure that they're all posted. So if any of you want to go back and uh, watch them. You're more than welcome. Um, and uh, this is a good stopping point. So I'll put the form online tonight. Maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Or maybe we'll see you over the weekend. Um, Laura, if you want to hang on for a second once I end the stream, I'll, uh, I'll uh, chat with you. Uh, but for everybody else, thank you all so much for tuning in. Um, sure. And I'll see you all next time. <laughs>